So she, she went out to her car and she got this brochure, a Fija brochure, one yeah. of ours, and went into one of the jurors who was also coming out of the courthouse at the same time and said, this is the documentation for what I was saying about the power and responsibility of the jury. Mm -hmm. Why don't you read this? The guy read it. It turned out he was not an ally. Yeah. He had been polite to her, but he was not convinced by her arguments. He ran in and gave it to the judge and the DA. Yeah. And a few weeks later, Laura <laughs> Creho was arrested for jury tampering. That's right. For but obstruction whole, of justice. But, but just to, to inject that here, the trial was over. Oh, yeah. It yeah, was see, all over. So the judge had declared a mistrial. Right. Everybody was on his way home. She did not drag this into the jury room and try yeah. to show it in there. Yeah. She didn't break any rules at all. That's right, because the trial was yeah. over. Yeah, she just said, this that. is how I learned yeah. that I can do the right thing, yeah. even if the law says mm -hmm. this. Well, they arrested her, and they processed her. And they get three counts. I forget them all, but one of them was obstruction of justice and jury and tampering. Jury tampering and, 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 uh, and the other one was they said that she had lied mm -hmm. during the voir dire selection mm -hmm questioning process and sneaked onto the jury with a secret agenda mm -hmm. trying to you know mm -hmm. I I think what I think what it was they said that she didn't answer all the questions she answered everything she was asked and of course she wasn't going to volunteer anything failure to something yeah you know, they that's said what that it was yeah she should have said that she knew about her power as a juror at that that's point what it was. even so it though feeling. she wasn't mm -hmm. asked she was under no such obligation yeah Mind you, there have been court cases in this country where the, where the ruling of the court was that the jury doesn't need to be told about its power because everybody should know it. That, yeah, yeah Tom, Tom explained that really yeah. nice, how, how you can become Superman in the courtroom. He explained that, yeah. Yeah, so you can't have it both ways. Both you ways. can't say, on the one hand, that everybody should know about his power as a juror, and then on the other hand say, you should confess that you know yeah. so that we can kick you off. That's right, yeah. You know, and, and so Laura didn't say anything, and she gets on this jury and hangs it. They try to prosecute yeah. her and, uh, for all these charges, and she won. But yeah, but and it was I a talked long, to her, you hard know. Hard mm -hmm. haul. They it had to go to the Colorado, Colorado yeah. Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court said it was going to uphold the appeals court decision. The appeals yeah. court decision was a real spongy decision that really didn't settle the issue. Mm -hmm. It said that because in the trial of Laura Creho on these jury tampering yeah. and obstruction of justice charges they should not have used her, her jurors to testify against her yeah. because that broke into the privacy of the jury room right. and exposed what had gone on in there, and that is nobody's business. That is supposed to be like yeah. privileged communication among the jurors, mm -hmm. and it's nobody else's business. And by bringing those jurors in, they had done the wrong thing. Well, you see, they avoided the question mm -hmm. of whether or not she was right. They settled the issue on the case on the well, basis of the, they interviewed the wrong people. Well, but if she had said she was right, bingo. Well, if they had said that she was right, that, we that, would be in business. That's like the alien thing, you know, when you have an encounter with, uh, and, and some people, they, they do run into things, and by law, they can, they can pick you up, quarantine you, and hold you without a hearing for one year. But that, like in the movie E.T., but it doesn't happen very often because there is a law, it, there is, it says, they say aliens don't exist. So how can they prosecute you in reference to something that doesn't exist? Yeah, same, and in Laura's same case, they basically made case. up a new law. That's right. They basically yeah. said, you have to spill your guts out even though we don't ask you the questions. Yeah. And that was her lawyer's best defense. He was going in there and saying, where is the law that says she's supposed to answer questions she was never wasn't even asked? asked? Yeah. Now, when I, when I talked to her, the reason I, I spoke to her personally uh, when, because of the workshops, I wanted to make sure I didn't misquote her. And what I asked her at the time was, you know, how, if, how she survived it emotionally and what was the biggest thing that she learned from the whole lesson. Yeah. yeah. And she said that, well, criminals have, um, they have rights, but she feels that every jury should have the right to have an attorney present. That's uh, yes. her well, message. If, yeah. in fact, you, uh, the courts can get away with prosecuting jurors, yeah for having opinions that the court doesn't like and not confessing them, yeah. then you do need a lawyer. 
Yep. When you are being uh, selected for a jury, yeah. you need a lawyer to say, Psst, don't answer this or mm -hmm. Psst, answer that and guide you through the selection process because if you say the wrong thing and can be punished for it, yeah. you need protection. That's so that's it. her point, and I don't yeah. blame her for saying it. That's what that was her final thought, yeah. you know, you know, uh, for the friends. Now, <laughs> but it, should I return to how the organization it, it, got started? Yeah, let's get back. Yeah, good. <laughs> At that, yeah, we got a long ways away, but I think it's, it was a good excursion. Yeah. At this point, I thought, well, this seems to be such a valuable tool for restoring the control of the government to the hands of the people. Uh, I'll bet you a lot of people catch on to it just like that. Yeah. And so I went to uh, and, and went to all the contacts I'd made in running for office and being a demonstrator and protester and being a college professor and all the different ways I'd made contact with people over a long period of time, mm -hmm. doing my best to try to make a better world by the mm -hmm. usual methods, voting, running for office, whatever. I made a lot of contacts. And I asked them if they would join an organization dedicated to educating everybody That's fine. about the power, rights, and responsibilities of jurors. Gee, it was amazing. All of a sudden, we had 50 people involved instead of just me. Yeah. And we set up a little headquarters in a camping trailer with, with a mechanical typewriter yeah. and a gas light in my backyard in Helmville, Montana, a town of 28 people. 28 people, yeah, on the last show. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about that. Um, that gives me an opening to tell the friends that the photographs that you see, uh, you, I had so many phone calls about the beautiful pictures Larry takes. Uh, so we've decided to uh, work him back into the feature show, uh, this show here, in case you're wondering what the, how, connection, how, is, what the yeah. connection is. So thank you for that opening. Well, the connection is merely that I make my living as a postcard uh, photographer. Yeah. And so, so you're there with your... Yeah, yeah, we're there with uh, the basic equipment. And, uh, you know, finally got a telephone installed and got things hooked mm -hmm. up, and uh, started soliciting memberships and started mm -hmm. uh, proposing various ways to get this educational job done. Turned out not to be so easy. Uh, when we went out on the streets with ballot issues, mm -hmm. you know, initiative process to try to get people to s to sign an initiative that said. Let's have a law that says the judge has to tell the jury the yeah. truth about its power. Yeah. People would say, what truth? I mean, the jury is only supposed to decide guilty or innocent. Or innocent yeah. What's this business of judging the law? And then we had to dig out all the uh, documentation and mm -hmm. proof that the founding fathers had two jobs for the jury, one That's to right. judge the law and one to judge the evidence, both in the same trial. And people were astounded. Yeah. I mean, how come they never taught me that in my eighth grade civics class? I said, well, who runs the school? The government. So you're going to have certain things left out because the government doesn't want you in charge of the government. Mm -hmm. They want it the other way around, so they're going to teach the civics lesson they want you to have, and they're going to leave things like this out. Oh. So people would sign it. Mm -hmm. Once they understood that this was the proper function of the jury, yeah. We had like a 90% signing rate. Yeah, the problem I, was... I find that too, once they understand it. Once they understand it, it clicks. It clicks. It's like learning to swim or learning right. to ride a bike. You never yeah. forget. It's in there. It's the truth. You can tell it's the truth. And you can't unknow it. You can't unknow yeah. it or unlearn it. Yeah. The problem was it took five minutes in most cases to do the little history lesson that it takes to get people to understand. One juror at a time. One juror at a time. <laughs> And they would then sign it. We had like a 90% signing rate, but we could only collect 10 or 12 signatures per hour. Yeah. Well, as you know, during if you're doing an initiative process, that's too slow. Yeah. Unless you have 5,000 people on the streets, each of them getting 10 per mm -hmm. hour, you need to be getting 20, 30, 40 people an hour to mm -hmm. sign an initiative, or you'll never get it on the ballot. Yeah, I, I, I believe you told the story late in, in not anymore, but then there was a time that if you got something on the ballot and it was a little late, they would carry it over to the next time and they would still count. Um, That's South Dakota. S and, South Dakota. Okay. And that we took advantage of that this time. We mm -hmm. uh, tried to get an initiative like this on the ballot in South Dakota for mm -hmm. the 2000 election, uh, but it looks like uh, we, we qualified it, but not until past the deadline, so they're going to count our signatures for the 2002 Again, yeah. election. Yeah. And so it has made the ballot. Yeah. 
but we're way down the track here because we've changed the language yeah. of the initiative. The first thing we ran into after, after we couldn't get it on the ballot, now mind you, what are we trying to get on the ballot here? We're trying to get a simple little statement that says, in all criminal trials, the judge shall tell the jury yeah. you have the right to judge the law itself and to reach a verdict according to your conscience. To your conscience, that's a key and word. Yeah, yeah, we just wanted that much yeah. in there. There were some other forms of the initiative mm -hmm. that said, and also you can't use the questioning, the voir dire process, mm -hmm. to get rid of jurors who don't think much of the law. Well, yeah, because they'll say the pool is tainted, start all yeah, over and manipulate they'll, they'll it keep again. Taking yeah. people out of the jury pool until everybody that's left agrees with the law, and then it doesn't matter what instruction you give them. Then they'll hang, yeah. So there, there was a lot of things that we tried to put into yeah. law through the initiative process, but they all took too long to explain. So we thought, well, there's always some good people in every state legislature. Yeah. Maybe we can go to the legislature, like all the other special interest groups, find a, an honest legislator or two, mm -hmm. get a bill together that says basically the same thing that we wanted in an initiative and get mm -hmm. it through the Judiciary Committee and then the House and then the Senate and then the Governor sign it, just like yeah. Uh, the, just like they teach you in eighth grade civics class. They do, yeah. So what we found out was that the Judiciary Committee was the bottleneck. It's all full of prosecutors. Mm -hmm. Not current prosecutors, because you can't be both a prosecutor and a legislator at the same time, mm -hmm. but ex-prosecutors or people who were on leave from the prosecutor's mm -hmm. office while they sit on the legislature and then they go back, you know. Whatever, these guys are not happy with our idea because it means that they're not going to have as many kills. That's right, yeah. They're, it's, it's harder to convict somebody if the jury can use its conscience. So, so then eventually, I, would, uh, I sidetracked you a little bit here, I believe. Um, it, it took so long with, with the little five minute speeches, it took so long. That we switched to trying to do it by then, legislation. Then, then you switched it. And, and that turned out not to be so good either because the legislature would resist in these judiciary committees and not let the full Senate vote on it or let the full House vote on it. They would kill the bill. Mm -hmm. And it was always, you know, they would, get, they would make up excuses just dragging them off the wall every direction. But the real reason uh, was that the prosecutors control the committee and the prosecutors mm -hmm. don't want, they don't want you to have an even chance in court. Yeah. They want to have the deck stacked so they can get a kill and look like they're doing something for law and order, even if all they're doing is putting innocent people in behind bars. They don't care about justice as a as a rule. They care about winning. Yeah, we and and, and we had explained about the more non criminals you get in jail, uh, the more la slave laborers you have. Yeah, and we, we, it contributes we did a, to the prison yeah, industry. Yep. They get to build new prisons. There's slave That's labor right. in the prisons. Yeah. It feeds that interest. It makes the judges look like tough guys. Yeah. It makes the prosecutors look like tough guys. Yeah. More law and order, all this other stuff. Pretty soon you have a police state, yeah. which we're rapidly approaching. Yeah. And you come along with a better idea, like telling the jury it's the truth about its power. And I mean, you are over here screaming in the wilderness. Yeah. And the legislature are going that way. Over here. Now, in the meantime, who's financing you? We're financed by uh, mostly by people sending in 10 and 15, mm -hmm. $20 at a time yeah. just to keep us going. There's yeah. thousands of them out there that believe in us with an occasional grant mm -hmm. from a large mm -hmm. uh, foundation. I understand originally you made a loan. And, and in South Dakota, I had to put up a con tremendous amount of money because uh, some of the people that were doing the initiative were making expensive mistakes. Ah. For example, you can pay petitioners, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can pay them by the signature, you know, mm -hmm. and that's legal in most states, and it's legal in South Dakota. You say we'll give you 75 cents or a dollar for each yeah. valid signature that comes in, or each signature, and we'll worry about the validity rate ourselves or whatever. Well, there was a couple of women over there who've been making an illegal and fraudulent living by sitting on their front porch writing names out of the phone book. And trying to change their handwriting and switching pens and or having a, good, a signature no. party where a half a dozen people sit around a keg of beer and just sign all day long and they turn it in and then they say these are valid signatures yeah they're not we found eight thousand bad signatures and we were oh, out of my, money, money and yeah. with only a very short time to go yeah. so 
And this, this is a very interesting side trip at this point. I put up the money and borrowed it on my credit cards and from mm -hmm. friends and relatives to pay for 8,000 more valid SIM 